Welcome to Business Talk, presented in collaboration with the University of Rio Grande and the Ohio State University South Centers, from the heart of Southeastern Ohio at the University of Rio Grande TV Studio. Our goals are simple, promote the University of Rio Grande and the Ohio State University South Centers, as well as advocate local small business and their support organizations. More importantly, promote Southeastern Ohio as a wonderful place to live, explore, and learn. There are many different ways you can find us. The University of Rio Grande Cable Access Channel 17, live online at blogtalkradio.com, and on YouTube if you are unable to catch our show live. Introducing our co-hosts, Jason Winters, Mike Thompson, Patrick Dingle. Thank you for tuning in. We hope you enjoy the show. Hey, welcome back to our show. Uh, today is November the 13th, 2013, and we have a special guest today uh, on Business Talk. Business Talk is a uh, uh, program that uh, is a half-hour informational uh, program in which it's sponsored by the University of Rio Grande and Ohio State University South Centers. Uh, today, as I said, we have a, a special uh, guest, Alex Kresser. Alex uh, was born and raised in San Jose, Costa Rica, and has lived in the USA for about eight years. Uh, she has 16 years of experience uh, in marketing, advertisement, branding, and graphic design. Uh, she has worked for BBDZ. BBDO. BBDO. Uh, you have to help me with this one. Wow. <laughs> That is uh, Sachi and Sachi and McCann Erickson, the advertising companies. Uh, some of them are based in the U.S., and Sachi and Sachi, uh, its headquarters are in London. Fantastic. Yes. So you're, you're multi, multi uh, national nationality. Um, but you're, you're, you come here, you're part of the uh, State Farm Organization, and your goal has been to... Uh, uh, share a, a rare and exciting State Farm career opportunity that uh, business entrepreneurs really find uh, to be of great value. Uh, you're looking for highly motivated, passionate, results-driven individuals, and you're very active in the community, and uh, you also serve on the board of Dayton Hispanic Center. I think that's fantastic. Yes, the Dayton Hispanic Chamber. I've been with that board for the past uh, seven years. Past so, seven years. Yeah, almost as soon as I came to the U.S., I got involved with with a chamber, uh, which is a great organization, and that helped me got con get connected with, with different people and State Farm. That's, I think that's yes. great. Uh, I, I do want to let you know our, our third co-host, Jason Winters, uh, was unable to uh, attend, but he's probably watching on TV somewhere or he's going to pick it up on the YouTube uh, uh, as soon as he can. But Alex, let, let's let's begin. Tell us about yourself. Well, um, as you mentioned, I grew, uh, I was born and raised in, in Costa Rica, so Spanish is my native language. And I've been in the U.S. for the past um, eight years. I moved here because I married um, an Ohioan. My husband was born and raised in Cincinnati. And um, I came uh, to the U.S. And, and, and been living in Dayton, Ohio, or close to Dayton, Ohio, for the past, um, the past eight years. And I've been working with State Farm for f more than five years now. Uh, really enjoyed my experience with them. I uh, started working with agents, helping them uh, with multicultural marketing and assisting them in other needs. So I was more of in a consultant role for the agents. And I've been in a recruiter role for the past four, four and a half years. Uh, really enjoying building relationships, making connections, and helping people accomplish their dream of becoming business owners with State Farm. So uh, what, how did you fall into the uh, insurance business? Well, it was, it, it was very interesting because, uh, well, insurance in my country is it's a monopoly. It's run by the government. 
Uh, so I did not have many experience with insurance and prior to being a State Farm recruiter and uh, working with State Farm, I was in the advertising world as, as Patrick mentioned. So I did not have the experience of, of um, having an insurance company as my customer or, or knowing about the products, uh, the industry in general. And when I came here, well, my husband was a State Farm customer. So that was the, my first introduction to State Farm. And through the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, I was able to connect with the multicultural director in Ohio for State Farm and um, got an interview and from, from, you know, the rest of his history. Mm -hmm. I've been with the company uh, for, for five years and a half and I just truly, truly enjoy my experiences. They've been great. They pretty much opened the doors uh, wide for me and welcomed me. And uh, even though I didn't have experience in insurance, they were more interested in, um, you know, my skills as a communicator and gave me a great, great opportunity, and uh, here I am. Very, so, very, very happy to be a part of, of the company. So just for curiosity's sake, uh, you said that the government runs the insurance in Costa Rica? It's a monopoly, yes. Okay, so do you have to have insurance there? Well, uh, you, you need to have, for example, the same as your vehicle insurance if you want to purchase a car, if you want to have a car. Uh, so you need to be insured. Um, so some mandates might be similar to the mandates that you have here. There's just no competition, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so it's it, you don't see the, the huge, uh, let's say, investment um, that companies make here to spread the word out, um, to improve their services, let's say, because there's only one option. It is what it is here. You have the com you know the competitiveness uh, between the companies, the, the rates, the service. So I think that definitely helps when you have that healthy competition and mm -hmm. people are more informed about their choices and they have more choices. So it was very interesting, very very interesting experience to learn about all of this while learning the language and the culture at the same yeah. time. You, you know, uh, Alexandra, uh, many of our uh, soon-to-be graduate students here at the University of Rio Grande and, and also at Ohio State University are, are looking for possible positions, uh, whether it's with the State Farm or, or with other corporations or companies. Uh, and one of the, the uh, things that I really liked when we were talking earlier uh, th this month was some of the do's and don'ts um, that students should be aware of, well, anyone should be aware of when they do uh, an interview of some sorts. Uh, what, what are some of the, the, the tips or the resume do's or don'ts mm -hmm. uh, we need to be aware of? Sure. Well, there's definitely, there's, uh, and nowadays, there's so much information also online that if you're putting your resume together, uh, you, you can, um, you know, get a hold of and all these different tips. But I would say what you need to keep in mind is whether you're, you know, an undergrad or, you know, a graduate student, um, alumni, what have you, uh, you should always make sure the first you use the right format in your resume and that you highlight the most important experiences that you have. If so you're a you should student, highlight the most experiences. Yes, the, the, the most important experiences most that you important. have. And, and, and set yourself <clears throat> apart from the thousands and thousands of other job seekers that the recruiters might be getting connected with. And, and also keep in mind that whenever a recruiter sees a resume, they probably spent just a few seconds going through, through I, that I information. Heard eight seconds. It's six seconds. That's six it. Cents. Yeah. Well, I sometimes <laughs> spend a little bit more just because of the language barrier. So I need to kind of focus a little bit more on the resumes. But so it's very little time that you have to make an impact, which is why you have to make sure that you use the right format. First of all, that uh, you know it's, it's a clean um, presentation. Use um, you know uh, traditional fonts. Don't get too 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 crazy with the creativity and you know. Don't use door. green and yellow paper and all that stuff. No, no, no. Try to make <laughs> it as easy as possible for someone to read and 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 also organize the sections accordingly to your experience if you're a student you probably want to highlight your your academic experience because it's what's most recent and maybe you don't have a, a long work history so you want to start with those accomplishments those achievements uh, highlight your GPA uh, if you want a scholarship or an academic award um, if you um, you know your, your major what whatever experience you have had also in terms of volunteer 
just be, being a volunteer, a leader, uh, working in a team environment. Uh, all those experiences and skills are important, and that's what recruiters are looking at. And do not, do not start your resume by saying, I'm looking for an entry-level position <laughs> where I can apply my skills and benefit the organization. I mean, don't, don't start with that objective statement that everybody Absolutely everybody, including their resumes, when they're getting, when they're trying to get their foot in the door and start working in the business community. Just really make, make it personal about yourself, your skills, what you're best at, what you're good at, what you can bring to the table. Because th that is going to be a very powerful introduction for what follows. So if you're a student, keep those things in mind. Use power, power words, or power um, Ber verbs where you say um, include words uh, as led, as met, as uh, initiated, developed, um, achieved, created, all these different things and just make sure that you're wording everything well. And you know, m less is, is, is more in this case. You don't want to have five pages long of explaining every single experience and hobby you have. No, you have to focus on what's, what really matters and what's important. Uh, make sure that you include those bullets. If you have things that you can quantify with percentages, what have you, of achieve achievements. If you have had work experience and have been able to, you know, met some goals, include all that information and make sure that it's nice and simple to read and that you really highlight your accomplishments. I mean, you really have to uh, play up your strengths when you're presenting your job experience because it's going to be a one-time impact at that point. How about length? I had a student in a class once that said, I can't get, and he's a student, a young guy. Yes. I can't get it all on like three pages. Oh, I you said, can. as a student, you should have maybe one. Oh, yes. One, one should be more than enough. And, and there's many examples of resumes that you can find online. And, and, and again, I have people that have worked in different, for different companies over you know, the course of 15 or 20 years, and they can fit that experience in one page because of what I'm saying. They really are focusing on what matters. They're using power words, uh, power phrases, uh, and, and, you know, a phrase that quantifies an accomplishment is worth way, way more than a whole paragraph explaining your activities within a certain role. So uh, you can do it. I mean, it can be done. It's, <laughs> you might need to work on it, but it can be done. It's rather interesting, Mike. Uh, when when uh, we were talking, I just happened to Google. Uh, I don't mean to use the word Google. I'm, I web searched resume writing power words, and there was a whole list of different okay. recommendations and tips, et cetera. So that, that's, uh, if someone doesn't understand those power words, there's page after page of, of tips. There is. And also, um, another good tip to keep in mind is that when, uh, when, uh, whenever they upload a resume you know, <coughs> online or even on LinkedIn, if they build their profile, to include keywords such as leadership, um, you know, managed, supervised, uh, team player, things of this nature, because a lot of the uh, search uh, engines or the systems that, that we have in place to find resumes and, and leads and prospects, look for those keywords. And, and that's how initially, I guess, is the electronic eyes that are going to be looking at these resumes before they even get to, you know, human eyes. So that's why you have to, to make sure that you build your resume accordingly to your experience and that you also connect with the right organizations and the right, you know, online uh, tools, uh, media, um, social media, because you don't want to just shoot your resume everywhere. You want to be very targeted on who, who you want to approach. Because if not, then people are not going to take you that's, seriously. That's something I have told people or students that they should be, they should have a resume for each job. Yes. You yes. know, there's, each job has a particular skill or yeah. outcome or whatever, and you need something tailored to each one, not just a general one. It, it, it's so, so true. And I give you an example. I receive resumes from people. Being in insurance, it, ha it has to be with do with relationship building. And yes, there's sales involved, but it has more to do with connecting with your customers and helping them and educating them to fulfill their needs. Well, I've received resumes from people that say, 
looking for a position as a chemical engineer, you know, uh, in, in this such and such or such and such field has nothing, nothing to do whatsoever. Oh with the job <laughs> posting or, or, or what we're offering. So obviously we, these, these people did just not do the research. Yeah. They just made, made one resume format, one cover letter, and they shoot that out to everybody. And immediately, immediately I just put those aside because I just don't have the time. I want to focus on those that are doing their due diligence, getting informed and doing their research. So you said something about electronic sniffing. Is, yes. okay, I know, I have uh, on my phone, I can let the phone listen to a song and it tells me what song it is. I think there's an application for that SoundHound or right. something like that. Sound yeah. So is there an application that goes through resumes that looks for keywords and brings the ones to the top that a uh, employer is looking for? Yes, yes, yes. definitely. Okay. Um, you know, as, as recruiters where we use kind of different sourcing methods, but we enjoy, enjoy working with social media. And every social media now from, well, LinkedIn is the one that I use the most. You can uh, include some, some keywords to do a search and then the people that are going to show up are people that have those keywords or descriptions within their profiles. And so do you knock on their door instead of you, well, them contacting you? It, in, in social media, it's more kind of me knocking on their door because I'm okay. trying to, to get that, you know, conversation started. But, you know, Career Builder, Monster.com, and all those this, this different um, career websites where people are actively looking for employment and they upload their information and share their resumes with employers. Those, those, um, those search engines are already built into those, those uh, websites where recruiters can go in and do their searches and find the right people based hmm. on these keywords. So that's why it's so important that you have a, a, a well-written resume that includes those power words so that whenever uh, folks are trying to connect with you and the people with your special set of skills, that you actually pop up in those searches. You know, one, one, uh, an in interesting thing, uh, uh, s sometimes when we post for a business development specialist, uh, we may receive... 75 125 different resumes and one of the in individuals uh, made it a personal policy that if there was one misspelled word regardless yes. of the credentials they threw the, oh the resume gosh. away yes and um, is that true it's so important to make sure mm -hmm. i mean this is your presentation card you have to proofread it over and over and over again and make sure that it's, everything is, you know, spelled properly. And have properly. someone else look at it because sometimes yes. you are tired of looking at it and it just looks right. A fresh set of eyes is always advisable, yes. But that's, that's very important what you're saying, definitely. And including dates, so just make it easy, easy to read. Because if you put everything all mixed in together, a paragraph, it's, it's just, I mean, the recruiter is going to go, oh, my gosh, okay. Uh, no, I, I'll deal, w deal with you later. Yeah. You have to make it easy for whoever's going That's to right. be looking at it to find out what your strengths are, what you're looking for, what you can bring to the table. Well, let, let, let's just suppose uh, the, the resume went through. Uh, what, what are some um, interview tips uh, when you're sitting down with, with the recruiter for the first time? I would say the, the most important tip that I can give someone is to be prepared and do their, 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 you know, their research before interviewing, find out who they're interviewing with, because it could be a panel interview, and oh, surprise, you come in that day and you thought you were going to be meeting with one person and there's seven people waiting for you. And you don't want to put yourself in that situation. So definitely, uh, prior to the interview, uh, make sure that you have, you know, the date, the time set, that you're, you know, punctual, that you get there hopefully 15 minutes before and make sure that you're wearing the, the proper attire, you know, uh, you know, very conservative attire. Don't use, you know, dangly earrings. And if you're a girl, if you're a, a, a guy, don't show up in jeans with a jacket. I mean, you have to obviously... Um, so I the shouldn't professional wear earrings. Etiquette. I, I shouldn't wear earrings. It might look good on you. You, <laughs> might be, you can go by with, with wearing earrings. Um, um, so that being said, just make sure that you know who you're meeting with. 
right? And uh, if you can even find out about the, the people you're meeting with, I mean, you can do Google searches, you can go to a company website and find out their names and their positions so you're better prepared for that interview. Um, and if it's a, a group, inter a panel interview, make sure that you're engaging, that you make eye contact, um, that you address people by name, and that goes also for one-to-one -one interviews. Now, should we have like a Mr. or a Ms., or should it be the first name? It could be a first name. You don't have to be, you know, I, I don't like to use those, uh, you know, abbreviations. I can just, I just say, say people, tell people, call me Alex. Okay. Um, so, right. but, you know, address people by name, uh, make the eye contact. Um, after the interview, as well, send thank you notes. That's very important to follow up hmm. and, 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 and showing people that you're very interested and, and, and you know, you're passionate about the opportunity. You want to be given the chance. You want to be considered. Um, and if it's a group interview, which could happen, especially, you know, some entry-level positions, they might be interviewing more than one person at a time. Well, in those cases, it's important to be a team player, right? Uh, you know, people are going to maybe be given the, the same answers. Uh, so, you know, kind of think about some questions you could be asked and possible different answers so you can set yourself apart. And be a team player. Think about the, you know, the rest of the people that are meeting uh, at the same time with you as your coworkers, and that you're working in a team environment. And that will put you, you know, in a really, really good position, um, um, you know, compared to the other folks. Okay, are you talking about... The group interview being uh, the group that is interviewing you as a group, no. or you might have other people That's that are competing panel. with the job yeah. all the in the same room. The first uh, example was the panel interview where you come in by yourself, and then there's like seven people in the room interviewing you. Okay. But the group interview is a format that some recruiters use where there's, you know, they bring in, you know, I don't know, four or five people at a time that they want to interview. It might be just me as a recruiter interviewing five people at a time and, you know, kind of playing on, see, see how they, you know, behave, uh, what they say, who stands out, and things of this nature. So like so the old dating setting. game. Yeah, <laughs> so that's the setting I'm talking about. Where okay. you want to set yourself I haven't ever seen your that, but it, it you happens. don't want to be the backstabber in that situation. Cause no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> and there's uh, obviously, you know, job fairs, which I know that you conduct those even on campus. Um, and, and some people make the mistake of, of thinking that it's going to be just a casual encounter. No, they have to come to those mini interviews or career fairs ready ready l l just as if you were interviewing that day formally for that position and well dressed were presented at the same time after after you have had a conversation with a recruiter uh send a recruiter a thank you say i enjoy our conversation i would like the opportunity for you know a formal interview or get to know more about the position and tell you what i can bring to the table you, you so know, should i, I call every three days to say did i get the job did no. i get the job no <laughs> <laughs> no, I know a lot of people is like I just got to be in their face all the time. No, and it happens. You know, it happens uh, that um, you know you might interview more than once for the same job. I mean, right nowadays there's uh, so much competition uh, for for jobs that that there might be you know one, two, three, four, even five interviews before you're offered the mm -hmm. position. So if you find yourself in that situation, just you know stay optimistic. Keep that, that enthusiasm going. Every interview that you come um, after the first one, express your interest, your passion, that, that you really want the opportunity. And, and just, you know, be positive. But at the same time, keep looking, right? Because you never know if, if it's, you know, you don't know for sure if it's going to happen. So I think under those situations, staying positive, uh, always, you know, being available when, when, when someone calls and maybe with a follow-up question, Contact them right away. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, show that you're interested in that position. And do you do uh, interviews over the web like Skype or, you know, video type interviews? Well, yes. Well, nowadays, those are more and more common. Um, now, at, it, as part of our process to become agents, there is a virtual interview that people have to go through okay. prior to the formal, formal interview, which that one is face-to-face. -face. But uh, technology, I think, is, is just the way we're going. More and more is going to be used. And, yeah, it becomes a little bit impersonal up to some point. Uh, but um, I, think, I, I think being flexible in that sense and, 
and 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 just making yourself available is what matters in 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 this in, in this time yeah we do that at, here at the college and one thing that i found that was somewhat interesting are you know these people are interviewing for fairly decent higher level jobs and when they interview on skype they don't dress up they might be in their jeans and a sweatshirt no, from a their home no. Yes, and it's like I love beer on the on the front of the T-shirt. Yeah, you you know you get your kids running around the back and, and everything, but yeah. <laughs> but they're not dressed up for an interview, and I just thought that was a really interesting thing because it's still an interview. It's still yeah, an right. interview. You have to you know look like you're dressed up for success, regardless if it's face to face, as Skype, if it's over the phone. Uh, you can be in your PJs. That's fine. Yeah. Nobody's was, going to be seeing you. And the background is important. The background. Make sure that it's, you know, a, a, a quiet place where you're, the dog is not going to be barking behind you or the baby crying. I had someone that uh, hung a bed sheet behind them. So it looked like they were interviewing laying on a bed. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it was weird. That's interesting. <laughs> well, um, as I said, our, our process involves a, a virtual interview, which is it's, it's a phone interview, actually. We don't use Skype. We might use it every once in a while. Yeah. But the, the final interview to select our agents is face-to-face. -face. Mm -hmm. um, we have, a, 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 a let's say, a, a unique recruiting process where we have a lot of people from different career levels, different fields that are interested in becoming business owners um, and, and pretty much building, building something of their own. And w they, we really want to make sure that we're a good fit for each other before we appoint an agent because they're in for the long run. We're not interested in appointing an agent for a year or two. Uh, State Farm is a company that it, it believes in investing, uh, giving the support that is needed, and having someone really representing the brand and carrying the promise of our founder. State Farm was founded in 1922 by a farmer uh, called G.J. Meherl, Meherl, and he founded a company under the principle of, of just doing what's right, you know, being fair and doing what's right for the customer, and that is what we're doing still nowadays. And our agents are really uh, part of their communities or the face of State Farm in those areas, which is why we want to make sure that we appoint the person, not for a year or two, but for hopefully 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Sure. So our recruiting process has to do with that, making sure we're a good fit for each other, and that's why we invest so much, getting to know you, allowing you to know about the opportunity, and we provide so, so much support. And it's my understanding that if you're uh, uh, interested in, in working with State Farm, you go through a, a, a series, a, a process of, of interviews to make sure that you have that right ability. Correct. There's a, a big investment that State Farm makes whenever we bring an agent on board. We have a paid internship. We're going to pay that person what they're currently making up to a, a cap, a reasonable salary, but it's a six-figure salary uh, if that's what you're currently making. And we help that person transition from their current role, regardless of what that role is. It could be a teacher in a high school. It could be the VP of, of a bank. But if they have a core competencies that will make them successful as, 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 as uh, advisors and educators and members of that community and business owners, then we will provide a training. So there's a pay training, there's a signing bonus that we provide to help them jumpstart their business. And in Ohio, we provide an established book of business for those people. So there's a huge, huge investment. And the process is very unique. And it truly allows people to make the right choice. So we are, we, we on date, we, we get married, or we date and we then get married, but we get married, <laughs> for, not, we, divorce is not within our side. We don't want that. Right. Right. So um, I will say to your listeners that if anybody's interested in learning about that, those types of opportunities, uh, or working maybe for an agent, that's another way of getting your foot in the door and, and, and start building your business acumen if, if you're are, you know, a student and not necessarily work, want to work full time or you want to just kind of pave your way, that's another great, great opportunity. I will be happy to help you. So, I, I, I yes. know you will. As a matter of fact, we had, we recently had a uh, MBA graduate Correct. Uh, that wanted to go down to Texas and uh, through your, your office, uh, she acquired a, a very good position that she's all smiles oh she, wonderful that's great that's uh, great and i i think that's very important uh in, in the fact that uh 
Yeah, you know, every, every job has its goods and its bads. Uh, and um, I, I have found that if you like your job at least 80%, if you look forward to going into the office or going into to work, thoroughly enjoying it, then yes. it's well worth that, that 20% that... And you'll be more like. successful doing yes. something that you really That's like right. to do. That's right. Correct. You have to be passionate about it, and there's no better way to earn a living than to help people. Uh, I mean, what, what a better combination. That the more people you, you, you help, the more wealth you accumulate. So it's, it's just a win-win situation being there for people at the most crucial time of their lives, and that's what our agents do pretty much. And, and, and it really comes down to you're really not selling something. You're educating individuals who might fit into the bill. Correct. That's right. Alexandra, I want to thank you very much for, for coming uh, to the University of Rio Grande talking. You've talked with a, a student of ours who uh, has ex expressed some interest. Um, I, there are other students that have expressed interest, and, and uh, I, I'm very pleased that you made your presence here today. Thank you so much for having me here. It's been a pleasure to come to university and, and meet you all as well. Well, we, we hope that this won't be the last time that that you come to the university. As a matter of fact, uh, we, we're going to schedule another another interview, so you have to come back. Great. That sounds great. <laughs> uh, next week, we have Scott Swain. Scott is an, uh, a, a tree arborist who is going to talk about trees. I'm Patrick. Okay, I'm Mike. And I'm Alex. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Gracias.